Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Skelly, and this is The Global Conversation. It's the fifth of our mini-lectures for the spring semester, and, and there's a number of issues that I'd like to talk to you about, but I, I first want to really emphasize to you, please be proactive in getting the learning circles going. Um, it depends on you. Just like the issues that we're dealing with in the wider world, it's important that you act. Define a project, talk it over with others, and if others aren't responding, get on with it anyhow. It's just the way it is in the world. There are lots of people who say, oh, I'm concerned about this, I'm concerned about that, but of course, they don't do anything. Uh, and to be very honest, we always get a few, very few actually, but a few, what we might call free riders who try to go along in the class, get academic credit for it, and of course, not really do anything. So please engage yourself, right? I know that you've got lots of things going on in your life, but if you really feel strongly about the issues in this class, which I hope you do, I hope you'll really be engaged. And, and that same thing goes for, for catching up on the, um, I've seen very, very interesting posts on the where does your stuff come from? Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't take much to do these exercises and to educate yourselves. The truth is that unless we educate ourselves, our species is going to be in very, very deep trouble. You know, one's everyday concerns sometimes seem, oh, the most important thing. And humans by nature, by biology are not necessarily long-term thinkers. And one of the difficulties in facing up to the issues that uh, are going to confront us is that they don't seem very immediate. But trust me, uh, I always joke about getting early release from this planet. Most of you are going to be on this planet for a lot longer than I am. And all I can say is the prognosis for what's going to happen doesn't look that great. And so please engage now. If for some reason you can't, always drop me a note, say, listen, Jim, I'm, you know, there's various things going on, etc., etc. Or even if you think you really can't participate in the class, we'd always welcome you back uh, for another semester if, if that's more convenient. So Let's, let's get on with that. We, um, we have some other things to uh, talk to you about this week. One is um, that there are, well, there's a couple of wonderful things. One is that uh, our long time, we have to say this, our long time uh, teaching assistant, who's now the assistant course coordinator, Jenna Goodhand, has just given birth to a lovely little boy. Um, and uh, you know, she's very happy, and they're both doing very well, and so I'm happy too. Jenna has been absolutely central to this uh, class, and uh, um, many of you have had any interaction with her through the Internet in any way, no, or please drop her a note and say, congratulations, okay? Um, she's named the little boy Beckett, um, and my joke with her, I have to tell this joke, my joke with her is that uh, she can now, just any time the baby cries, she can now quote one of the lines from Samuel Beckett's play, Endgame. And that, that, that line is, you're on earth, there's no cure for that. Right? So if baby cries, just shout that and you'll be fine. I'm joking, of course. At any rate, congratulations to Jenna. Um, some other things uh, to tell you about, a couple of them. You know, one of, one of the issues we're going to be concerned with here, um, I know some of you have gotten um, on, you should be perhaps already uh, addressing climate issues. Um, one of the most important lectures here uh, is in theme six, where uh, we actually have Jared Diamond uh, giving uh, an hour or so long talk uh, at the University of California in Santa Barbara. 
And Diamond is the one who um, wrote the book called Collapse, right? And we're particularly interested in what happened to Easter Island because Easter Island is the place uh, that is metaphorically analogous to uh, uh, the Earth. Uh, Easter Island isolated in the Pacific and uh, planet Earth uh, isolated in the universe. Uh, and you know, he, during, the, during the lecture, and I really would pay attention to this, during the lecture, one of the things that Diamond uh, talks about is how one of his students raises the question, what was the person thinking when they cut down the last tree on Easter Island? And they did. They at one time had the largest palm trees in the world, and they cut them all down. They essentially destroyed their habitat by not thinking about the commons, right? You, you all will know, I think, that one of the readings that we try to emphasize here is the tragedy of the commons, where people, that's the, it's on the website, uh, in, I think around theme six, actually, or maybe a little earlier. Um, no, actually it's on theme seven. Uh, but let me just say that one of the things that, that's that very, very clear is that humans consistently think of their own individual interest rather than the commons. And given the circumstances that we're facing, it's going to be very, very important to start thinking about the commons. People of Easter Island didn't do it, and let's hope that we humans on this planet will do it, and much more broadly than we're doing it now. A couple of other things I wanted to bring to your attention is there's a report out from um, the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Uh, the Director General of that United Nations organization is going to be joining us for the conference that we uh, organize every spring in Strasbourg. Uh, we're also going to be looking, as some of you know, at the question of ecocide. And Polly Higgins, the UK environmental lawyer who is trying to make ecocide crime against peace, will be speaking at that conference as well. But there's a report out about uh, what's happening in the oceans. And um, it seems that more than one in ten marine species in uh, the tropical eastern Pacific Ocean are now facing extinction, actually 12% of the species. And these include giant sea turtles, several, uh, several uh, uh, species of marine turtles, uh, and many, many other fish. They're on what the IUCN calls its red list, and it's worth paying attention to that. Take a look at it. Um, the oceans are in increasingly bad shape, and it is worth thinking about what we need to do um, to revive them. One of the things that you can look at is the attempt to create underwater reserves, uh, areas which cannot be fished, etc. Um, Sylvia Earle, uh, the author of Blue Planet, um, uh, one of the great oceanographers, has been leading this initiative, she and others, uh, and it's worth checking on that as well. Um, I'll give you a link anyhow to this article. Um, another one that's a bit worrying because we're going to have to look at food issues very shortly. Um, all of us love food, I think, um, but um, the way in which our food is produced is, you know, it's a bit worrying. And there's an article out just yesterday that really uh, left me a bit worried. Um, and that is that there's a livestock virus uh, now been found on, it's called the Schmallenberg uh, virus. And it's now been found on 74 farms in England. It previously it's been in the Netherlands and Germany, but it's now spread to the United Kingdom. And, you know, we have to worry about these kinds of things. The, the, the disease causes birth defects and miscarriages in livestock. And many of you will at least know of, and I remember the, the incredible drama around mad cow disease. Um, part of this may be uh, because of the way in which we keep livestock. And if 
uh, any of you get the chance, I certainly will show it in my class you uh, here at the University of Ulster, but if you get the chance, look at Food Inc. Uh, it will put you off eating certain kinds of food, or at least make you think two or three times before you buy a burger at some place. Um, but take a look at that. Okay. A couple of other things I wanted to bring to your attention. One is um, a very a short video on fracking. You know, this is the effort to get um, oil, right, we, out of out of rock, basically out of shale rock, right. Um, so uh, um, we have a short video about what's going on in Pennsylvania, and I know that there's a good cohort of students, about 12, 15 students from Pennsylvania in this class, um, and as, as some of you may have noticed, um, the actual um, course is hosted on uh, the computer of Juniata College in Pennsylvania, which of course is right there in the middle of what's called the Marcellus Shale. So uh, I'll send you a, a link to that as well. Uh, perhaps I can even integrate it into this. Uh, I've been trying to figure out how to integrate some of these videos into uh, the mini lectures because I think if they're short enough, they, they can work very nicely. There's also some, some concern today about uh, increasing drought and the way in which it's going to drive up uh, food prices. Um, and this is happening not just in places where we think it might happen normally. It's happening in places like England. Okay, So you want to take a look at that. And when you, um, one of the pieces I, I can't urge you enough, in, in addition to Jared Diamond's lecture in Theme 6, please take a listen to Climate Wars. It's an hour-long production. There is two others if you want to really go into it more deeply, but we only ask you to listen to Part 1. Climate Wars is um, a three-part series done for the Canadian Broadcasting Company by Gwyn Dyer, uh, the scholar of war and other uh, horrific events. Uh, so if you haven't listened to that, I think I've recommended it to some people before. I may have recommended it in a previous video. Now, here's some good news. Um, this weekend I picked up a local copy of the Irish Times, there's a wonderful writer who always writes uh, writes regularly in the magazine section on Saturday. Her name is Roisin Ingle. And Roisin Ingle, in her article, uh, uh, she says, it's titled, On Having Enough. Right? Um, and she talks about how she's transforming her life. Right? Um, her friends always expected her to be in a taxi, for example. Now she's either on her bicycle or on the bus. Um, and, and she's really changing her life. Part of this is in response to conversations that she's had at a professor known as Anne B. Ryan. Anne Ryan of the National University of Ireland in Maynooth, which is just a, is a small town just outside Dublin. I'll be going down there on Thursday to meet some people, and in fact, I'm going to try and meet with her as well. I'd like to interview her because she's one of the people behind something called Enoughonomics, right? Um, and she has this wonderful discussion. Uh, I'm going to post a video uh, uh, of a talk she's given, uh, Anne Ryan's given. It's maybe uh, 25 minutes long, so it's not too much. Uh, I think you'll find it... Um, very, very interesting, because uh, among other things, she talks about the fact that there, one of the words in Irish, uh, uh, orlior, means enough, and it also means plenty, right? Plenty and enough are the same word. Think about that. Maybe enough is plenty. Hmm? That would be an interesting thought, and maybe we, maybe I'll ask you, some of you, to reflect on that. Please do get engaged with the learning circles. We really need you to define a project and let us know what you're going to work on. Uh, and if anybody's having trouble, you know, participating at all, please let us know. You need to alert your colleagues uh, in the learning circle that you can't participate, whatever the problem is. You know, we we don't uh, we understand. 
that people have difficulties in their lives, various things, cross pressures, etc. And that this, this course is in many ways uh, demanding of your time. But if you organize your time properly, I think you can really contribute to these learning circles. So please do what you can and please be in touch uh, and uh, I'll be in touch with you as well. Thanks.